The person at the helm of Twitter is Dick Costolo, who became CEO in 2010 after being the company's COO. Since its founding in 2006, Twitter now has more than 500 million users, out of which 284 million are active. Twitter is an online social networking service that enables users to send and read short 140 character messages called tweets. I'm interested to hear from Dick himself the story behind Twitter and the origin of the little blue bird. Okay, Dick, thank you for inviting me here in your Twitter headquarters. I'm very, very happy to be here. And the thing is, I it's have, great to have you. I have been using Twitter for a while. <clears throat> and it's very much part of my life and yeah. the stuff I do every day, you know, update my status and so on and so forth. But sometimes you forget that there is actually sort of a history that goes behind this wonderful application. Mm -hmm. So as a CEO of Twitter, and it's not every day that we get to talk to the CEO of Twitter, although we use Twitter every day, <laughs> <laughs> tell me just a little bit about what is actually, you know, Twitter all about, the story behind Twitter, mm -hmm. especially since it's grown yeah. exponentially right. in less than a decade. Yeah. Well, when uh, Ev and Biz and Jack uh, founded the company, they really thought of the 140 characters as just a, a way of, in fact, if you go back and look at the very first tweets, it was just a, here's what I'm doing right now, you know, and you would see the first tweets were, you know, getting off the plane in San Francisco, you know. What I'm Drinking a glass breakfast. of wine, well, yeah, what I'm having for breakfast, etc. And um, it was surprising, I think, to uh, the founders and then the early employees of the company, and then when I joined, uh, even since I've joined in 2009, how quickly it evolved and then continued to evolve. So, for example, everything from, you know, at replies to hashtags to all these things, trending the users, topic. trending topics, all these things users just created. You know, and then we as a company started to incorporate the things our users uh, created on the platform and built them into the product. Retweet was uh, created by the users. They just started putting RT at the beginning of, of tweets. And uh, all these things that our users evolved for us into the product um, caused it to be caused it to start to be used in these remarkable ways that we never anticipated uh, when, we were, when the product was first being built and even as we've evolved our own use of the product over the course of the last few years. And it continues to be the case that almost uh, every year and then every month we'll see some new use of the product that we hadn't anticipated before. Um, so I think when you go and ask the, uh, ask the founders and ask Ev and Jack and Biz, did you know all these things would happen? You know, they, they shake their head very, very quickly and say, no, it evolved so rapidly and our users took our ideas and, and evolved this um, enormous communication platform that uh, exceeded anybody's uh, imagination. Wow, that's fascinating because we, the users, yeah. you know, the hundreds and millions of people right. we used to it, we actually are creating <clears throat> Twitter that's right. together with Twitter. Now, that's right. Let me ask you a little bit about the history of this 140 yes. character. This yeah. is something like, you know, why 140 right. character again? Yeah. What's the story behind Sure. So um, the product was uh, created to be a mobile communication tool. And there used to be a um, uh, sort of an interchange between different mobile operators um, limit of 160 characters per SMS message. Um, uh, when, you were when you were sending an SMS between two different mobile operators, for example, there was a 160 character limit um, at the time. And so uh, the founders decided, well, we'll use 140 characters for the message, and then 15 characters for the at username, the user ID, and we'll reserve five characters for we don't know what we might need it for in the future, but we'll just have five other characters we can use that we never used for anything. Um, of course, nowadays, you can messages can be as long as you want them to be and uh, so forth, but the 140 character uh, constraint has remained. And it's really, um, it really became a, such, a, such a vital part of the, of the tool. I mean, retweets and at mentions and hashtags all evolved from that, the beauty of the 140 character constraint. And the amazing thing, actually, it's changing the way we communicate with each other. It's you can express a lot of stuff in 140 characters. That's right. Characters. 
In fact, um, they're actually impacting the way we communicate. That's the right. Language we use. That's that's correct. It's um, it's impacting the way news is uh, propagated around the world. It's impacting the way elections are conducted. I I'll tell you, it even um, when you meet with some of the famous comedians um, who use the platform pretty regularly to communicate with their fans, they will all tell you, you know, sometimes I'll write a joke and it's like 150 characters, and I wish. It could be, you know, I wish I could tweet 150 yeah. characters, and then I'll shorten the joke to 140 characters, and it's a much better joke that way. So, um, just for in all the different ways it's used, that constraint has proved to be um, very motivating of creativity and different ways of communicating. Now, Dick, everybody, and I mean everybody, uses Twitter. You know, from leaders of a country, you know, presidents, prime ministers, celebrities, <coughs> politicians, the ordinary man in the street, mm -hmm. journalists, people in the media, kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. But from sort of the other side of it, I mean, mm -hmm. not many people know, you know, what is behind Twitter? I mean, what, what is Twitter like as a company? Is there sort of a philosophy to the company now, especially sure. since it has evolved very rapidly in the last nine years? Yeah, sure. There's there's absolutely a philosophy and a set of core values that m motivate us and bring us all together culturally, internally. One of the things that I think a, a CEO's time is best spent on is making sure there's a consistent culture within a company, um, particularly a global company, so that everyone around, everyone around the world is thinking about the company the same way, thinking about the platform the same way, and thinking about the goals of the platform the same way. So. Um, we have a, a set of core values internally um, that are very important to us. They, they motivate the way we make decisions. They inform the way we think about the future of the product. And they include things like um, you know, our, our aspirational goal to reach every person on the planet. I mean, I'll, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked um, in interviews, you know, how many users do you, you think you, you know, would like to have on Twitter? And I always reply, our objective is to reach every person on the planet because every, everybody, everybody inside the company believes that the world will be a better place when everyone can be informed about what's happening right now in their world.